Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. And I'm Connor Connors. Our prayers were answered. We asked, we begged, we pleaded with the great Michael Chabon that we wanted to see new Starfleet Federation ships. And we sort of did in Mars years ago. But in this episode, Stuart, we got an entire fleet, over 100 Federation starships, commanded by William T. Riker, Captain, not Admiral, that's important, dropped in to say hello and say bugger off to the Romulans. We asked for it. We got it. Here we go. That's a human hello. Very different from a Vulcan hello. I was, I was, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Did you zoom in though? I did. No, I didn't need to zoom in when I was watching on TV because I was like, I'm a ship guy. So when the ships start, and you got the music, the epic Starfleet music, you're like, yes! And quickly, within like f four seconds, it's like, no, what the hell is happening? <laughs> First image we have is now i will say this is better than discovery season two's battle in that you had thousands of drones and shuttles that meant nothing at least we're now down from thousands to hundreds of bigger ships that still mean nothing so we are slowly getting more realistic by season five of picard we might get four or five ships that are actually hero ships that actually have by season five of picard we might get into what ds9 was however many years ago that was yeah. yes it's amazing how the ds9 battles look better than these battles oh they look much better. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where both sides have several ship classes, they invent new ships, and there's even a, a Breen fighter that you can't even see because the resolution is so bad, but it exists. The f I think already from this long shot, you can see that there's that there's two different Bassard colours. That that was my first hint, that there's a yellowy and a red. Which yeah. But the next picture is Riker. Let's talk the bridge briefly first, and this moment, because this was... Satisfying as all hell to have him here, have Freaks back, um, see him actually as a full captain, not admiral. He was acting captain, so he was never he he did what Kirk gave advice to Picard as, don't let him be promoted. So he was never promoted to admiral, which I like. Yeah, yeah, no, it was great seeing him in the uniform and uh, shame about the bridge, but I mean at least we saw something. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering. We'll talk about that later, probably. Yeah, I'm wondering if they even flew him to Toronto to film the Discovery sets, or if they just green screened him because it kind of looks like green screen. He's a director. He probably direct, was directing an episode of Discovery in Toronto. And they're like, while you're here, quickly redress this thing. And get. I think that was probably more likely than... Maybe, yeah. Because we know that he was only added to the show after season episode six. And Discovery, so I guess, I don't know if, I don't know if he's just directing later Discovery ones, but yeah, probably. Um, but he looks great in uniform. And thank God he fixed his hair. Because when he was on Rep uh, Nepenthe, it was just like... <laughs> But here it actually looks good. So here it's good trimmed. uniform and confirmed. Now we can confirm red is command because we had slight concerns previously. So the, the classic styles work. It looks great. Good for him. Uh, now the next shot is you can see that in this one shot there are two types of ships. I've tried to incorporate ones that can't, can include both. And I noticed this straight from the get go. Now they are so there's, there's several hundred ships or or hundred ships. Now, they're all the same except the nacelles. There are two different nacelle variations, but the primary hull is the same on every ship, from what I can tell. But they did at least make two types of nacelles, and they're not kit bash nacelles, they're completely different nacelles, which is an interesting choice. Yeah, and very short nacelles. They've kind of gone away with, gone, got away from the, the Sovereign class long nacelle design. Like, this is a very much more compact looking ship. Which is fine. It's not as big, obviously, as a Sovereign class. You can just tell from the, the windows. Mm. and Actually, there might be more, because if you look at the bottom picture, the one right in front of camera, pylon, is middle forward of the nacelle. If you look at the one just above that to right, it looks more much further back. I know it's a different nacelle variant, but the, the pylons look a lot further back. And if you look at the left uh, on the bottom picture of both of those, it's also further back. So I think there's... I think there's. I think they moved the nacelles on the pylons to give them different feels. There might be three different styles. It's the same ship. They just moved they some look, pieces. Yeah, they look too much alike. Like this is not a great idea. Well, I mean, what do you think of the ships? There are again. We're going to get to the images later on, but to give us your sort of first actual reaction, ignoring the fact that they built one main ship, two sets of nacelles, and, and moved the pylons, moved the nacelles slightly. What is your general thought of the design? I think it's it's fine. It's actually a neat looking ship. You can tell it's a John Hughes inspired design. It has John Hughes signature all over it essentially, uh, but it does feel like John Hughes designed by committee. Like he he designed a good ship and was told by the producers to change a few things, and then change those things, and then they told him to change more things, and it just has that feel because we know that Discovery and other ships kind of started out 
much better and then just kind of got corrupted over time because of all the changes. I think it's at the point where John's just like, I give up. Here, here. This is what you wanted. Here you go. <laughs> well, yeah, when you're told, I mean, Discovery had a year of design, hundreds of variations. At some point, you can't use creation anymore. You just got to let them do their thing. When your gut, you know, John's gut reaction comes first and then that gut reaction is being overruled by producers. At some point, your gut reaction clearly isn't what's needed. Uh, I, I will say th these ships, they, they tick the box of looking Starfleet. They fit the era, but they're not very interesting. Um, and the window, at least they're small ships. They're not like big Leviathan. The window size is really small. Like these are small ships, smaller than the Sovereign. Next picture, the surprising full view of the ship. Does that look familiar? It does. It's one of Johnny's older designs. Yes. Mm. So this ship, this new ship, is actually a Star Trek Online original early two thousand or early two thousand tens or yeah, late 2000s concept sketch he did as part of a booklet that was never used for perpetual entertainment. So this, just like the shuttle was, is an unused design of his from 15 or so years ago. So it wasn't designed by Committee Stewart. It was an old design he happened to have that he threw at them. So they didn't even design a brand new ship. They used an old ship. Well, there are a few differences between this one and the ones that we saw there. So I like it. I really do. I like the... the placement of the impulse engines which are yellow for some reason sort of the bizarre collectors but that's fine johnny's is colorblind so <laughs> just saying so, i think it's a, a neat little design it very much falls in line with like the nova class like equinox kind of size you know not not big which i like i think it's a nice little scout ship this is a better design than the one that yes we got oh absolutely yes um this actually has phaser strips and detail, but I mean, it's, it's clearly inspired, um, and you know, it depends how much time and money the producers give you to do such a thing. I mean, clearly not if, a lot of either. If they're like, you have three days, you have a weekend and here's your paycheck. And he's like, Oh, goes home, opens up the closet. <laughs> Here you go. I, I did this on the weekend. No, I actually did it like five years ago, but it's still a fantastic design. So. But doesn't that show something, doesn't that tell something about the Picard show that they didn't want to put the effort in to either make a high-end model, design a full ship, think about the era of art design? It's very strange. It's very strange. But I was happy to find this uh, shot and, and see how similar it was because it does give you a sense of where the direction was. Um, and I think this one has some really cool things like the way the Greeblies are, the way the escape pods are. It's a really nice... But, Stuart, there are two variants of this ship in the show and I've went through every single picture of this battle and digitally enhanced them, digitally colored them, and found as many angles of each variation to make it clear. So this next picture, Stuart, is variant one, which is the one that has the red basards and the very, very, very small warp grills. And this one is, is you can kind of get confused because this one looks like the four nacelle one because of some angles, but actually it's a, it's a single nacelle with two basards, but at such an angle that they kind of look this way. So this I is I like it. Now, my question is though, what, which one is the USS Shang He? Or Zhang He, that's the one uh, Riker's on. So they I, don't I know. know. We don't know. They didn't even show us a shot of it. They don't care. And none of them have registry numbers <laughs> or names. Oh yeah. So you know. well, I mean that's that's a DS9 trope. I'm not. I mean, come on, they made it 100. They're not going to name all of them. Um, but yeah, I mean th these 3D models are so low detail. I've said to you several times now, but the detail of this 3D model feels to me like a Voyager ship of the week built in the 1990s. If I gave the ship to Pierre Droulet, the expert model maker who did Firefly, the Battlestar, uh, many Battlestar ships, you know, the Enterprise and XO-1, the Discovery, well, the Shinjo, like he could build this in a weekend. This was given almost no money and it feels it. It literally feels like a 1990s ship to me. Now the textures are nice, textures are high detail, or it's a high resolution, but there's no detailing on the hull. I don't know if you get that same vibe, but to me it feels like a 1990s ship model. Looking at these, I wouldn't think there was no detail on the hull. Like, you can see variations in hull plating and stuff. But it's all textured. Um, that's the point. Well, yeah. Okay, I see what you're, okay, I see what you're saying in that regard. Somebody that's not a 3D modeler might not necessarily understand that. And plus, the, sh the shots we got of it aren't zoomed in and enhanced and color corrected or whatever. So, I mean, you see it on screen and it's like the average viewer is just like, ah, it looks great. I, I got to say, the shot of it from behind on the right there, um, there's two of them, like... And it's kind of in the middle, but uh, I love the shape that it's making there. It's very marine life. It feels like a, a whale or something. Uh, it works really well for that design.
honestly, the last the last shot where we had both designs, it didn't work as well. This this collage it looks better. Instantly, it work looks better. Uh, I mean, that top left shot looks so elegant with the nice big impulse engines. The way the bottom and secondary hull curves it looks nice. The middle right, just same same shot from the top, looks sleek, looks nice. But so for some reason, that bottom long one, it it looks so boring and grey and flat and you you see there's no phaser strips there's no blinkies there's no registry there's no um there's no detail there's no there's nothing inside the windows they're all just textured white it looks like every other ship in star star trek online <laughs> you know you see you see them flying by and you're like oh i don't know what variation that is but and about the same level of detail as a game model but the other but some other shots when it's lit better and, and it actually looks kind of cool my beef is um the thrust nozzles or the glowing elements on the end of the nacelles really annoys me because that's very JJ. That's very, this is thrust. That's not how things work. Although these are the most, these are the fastest, most heavily armed ships in Starfleet now. So that's the thing. Without and, phaser and strips. And Riker's on the flagship, which is not now the Enterprise. So. I mean, Okay. It's just, yeah, it's fine. The most uh, most advanced, most strongest ship and hasn't got any visual weapons of any kind. But they didn't bother doing blinkies. Like, a bridge blinky, like, just bulbs. I mean, the thing is, you build one ship, you keep the rest of the nacelles. Great. You make those models nice, then you clone them a thousand times. But so they're they, all nice. So they're all nice. Yeah, it's even easier to make a high detail ship. I know, obviously, more render, render time for more detail model, but they're getting really close to these models. Like, they're getting hero shot close. You know, it's like, why hasn't the shuttle bay got any lights on the shuttle bay to show... Like, we know the conventions of, of later design. That shuttle bay gets completely lost in these shots because there's no lights there. There would be lights. Unless things have changed because the Dominion used lights as a weakness. They, they focus their light homing beacons or their light homing photon torpedoes on those. So you got to turn those off. The phaser strip thing doesn't bother me so much because this is 20 years on. There could be new tech for phasers like little holographic things that when they need them they they fire up like a holographic emitter and then it anyway so lack of that doesn't really bother me so much yeah it's just we had ball turrets and phaser turrets for 100 200 years like i don't know um it just shows a lack of attention to detail that's what these ships ring to me is just massive lack of detail and it's even weird that shot right in the middle why do the impulse engines are strong on the left and then on the right, one of the impulse engines is like not lit properly? Uh, I don't know about you, but I did get, though, and I know it was based on a stove ship, but the fact that the front of the ship has a kind of an Akira Titan vibe with the, the pontoons, and the back has an Enterprise F feel with that very thick neck that goes down. So for me, it actually does pull from two distinct designs. I do like the impulse engines a lot. I do like these nacelles. I wish they had more glowing grills because to have the most diddly small grills feels odd. To have massive bassards and tiny grills. Um, and I don't know why you'd give the same class of ship two, two different nacelle variants. I don't know why that would be a thing. Maybe they're in the process of upgrading the fleet. Let's, yes. let's go to the next picture. Yes. Ship this is a two. different design. And wow, it's actually got some pretty interesting angles on it <laughs> it's very flat and squared off um especially the shot on the upper right where it's kind of from the bottom uh this looks like it could be kind of a carrier version because it looks like a huge shuttle bay door at the front um on the bottom of the secondary hull yeah, it's weird how the i go back to the last bit for a second it's the same primary hull and secondary hull it's just in the cells but the vibe of this ship looks all organic and sleek because the nacelles are curvier. Cut to this shot, it now feels boxy. And why? How did that change all of a sudden, Stuart? It's the same ship. This is kind of a neat looking ship, but it, it feels too rudimentary. You know, like the shapes just aren't refined enough. Uh, I don't mind it from the top, like that middle one on the left hand side. I think that's kind of a cool looking design right there. Although um, you can see how the nacelle, the pylons don't look good from the angle. Like they're very bulky, they're right at the end. If they, really if they don't look good from if they don't look good from any angle, it's the one in the upper right. Yes, <laughs> they're just they look really awkward there. Uh, and obviously, no deflector dish of any kind. Uh, not a deal breaker, but they missed it. Well, then people are going to bring up the Miranda. But I could also bring up every single ship in the Dominion War. Yeah, um, I know, except Miranda. So I, I mean, know. you know, there's always an exception, but there is still a rule. Um, but I do like these nacelles actually. I like I like the I like the squared off nature. I like the the coils a lot better. 
So I, like, I think I like them just themselves more. Yeah, I, I do too, but I would like them to be extended. I like them to be a little bit longer. They're just a little too stubby for this ship design. If it was swept back pylons for this version with this nacelle, it'd look better. Because the stubby would work if they're pushing back. That's all you need to do. Yeah, or just move the attachment point uh, where it, from the, the way they're angled now. Just move the attachment point up closer to the bizarre collector so they, they trail back a bit. Yep, wouldn't take much. But that front view, that top left, I mean, how awful does that look? Like, low detail. Looks like something out of... Well, honestly, out of Enterprise. <laughs> well, like, a, again, um, a ship of the week. I mean, you can see the windows. Why are there Why is there four decks of mini windows? Why are the massive windows on the saucer rim three times the size of the small windows? Why are the saucer... I mean, you can see... All, I mean, as a 3D modeler, this is like a, a half a day. I mean, the, it's awful. That could be a deflector of sorts, not necessarily windows. But the way it's cut out like that, I think it's got another purpose. And there's also the venting underneath, like the, the grating. Um, that could also be something like a deflector, so just saying. Yeah, I mean, it needed, I mean, if you go back to the John Eves concept, you can see at the front there would, was a deflector dish. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, back, back to this again. Yeah, it wouldn't have taken much to add a, add a deflector-y thing here. Um, and and just it just bugs me the lack of all the windows and stuff. But the bottom view with the impulse, it's great. Yeah, like the bottom left is a really great shot, actually. And even the, even the, 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 the right... The right back shot with that curve at the bottom looks nice. It has because you can't see the the the, the pylons look like they're back swept, and you can't see the you know everything kind of has a different feel. But the next view is a uh, set of pictures from every angle, kind of like to show it off. Um, because now we have that middle one, which is the clearest view of the bottom. As you can see, there's literally no detail of any kind on the bottom of the ship. Not a single window, nor any detail of any kind because they realized they weren't going to see the bottom very much. And so talk about lazy lack of time modeling that they didn't put any money towards. They learned lessons in the minion war that the, the transparent aluminum shatters when you have windows on the secondary hull, so they needed to not do that. So they were fully armored now, because these are battleships. Then why on the top do they have windows effing everywhere? Because nobody shoots at the top of a ship. <laughs> Except <laughs> everyone? Know. Exactly. I'm just trying to, like... Because people are going to make these arguments in the comments. I know it. Devil's advocate. Yeah. No, I just, as a 3D guy, it's just... Um... Oh, I know, I know. See, I'm not. So, But I, I do think the the lack of windows is is something that throws these ships off for me uh, on the secondary hull. They just seem dark. You, know? yeah, you, you can tell that they only had, like, maybe a week max to make this. Max. And they had to make two versions. I bet they were told we only have three or four ships. And they said, right, for some reason I can't in the time limit. So I'll make you one, but do different styles. I said, okay, fine, fine. And they said, well, we're going to see most of the top. So they finished the top as much as they could. And they said, I'm going to time for the bottom. We'll skip the bottom entirely. We just won't show the bottom very much because it's low detail. And, they just, and the next picture, there was a different concept view of this John Eve ship. Um, just to sort of remind you what it was based on. Um, and all the details this has, all the integrated pieces, you can see the after pier launches, you can see the phaser strips, you can see the escape pod, where the escape pod hatches, where the registry is, where you know, all the things the other ship's missing, that even if they were using the concept, they're missing. And the next shot is the full art. It comes from the USS McGill and Archer in 06. So it's older than I thought. So this is a... McCall. Not McCall, sorry. Oh, 08. So this is a 12-year-old concept design. Um, and they had two. And not I, not I think either of us would have wanted the cutout in the saucer, but they had two variants they could have pulled but, from. Yeah, and having one that had negative space or cut out in the saucer would have been nice to see in this fleet because it would have been something different than every other of the ships. If it had cutouts, but also shuttle bays in the cutouts, like, negative space makes no sense, but if you had, like, all, all its, like, work B bays, that'd be cool. Next view, though, just to go through the full screen version, just to get a sense of the whole fleet, because um, in this shot you can see, this is how they're warping out, very clear views of the ships, and you can see instantly the different variants, because now we're seeing them in context. You can see the left-hand side has the orangier variant with the lot, a lot less grills, and then the one on the right, which has the red and the grills. So next view, uh, this is a few seconds ago, and yeah, most of the ships haven't got impulse drives on for some reason, like, throughout the entire fleet, and yet some do. You can see that the... Some variants are the yellow don't, but then you get some nice. You do get some nice views, although it's so weird. Like that t top left highest ship, it looks awful. But then you go to the top right ships, like those two look really nice from the side. 
uh, next shot with the billion lens flares. Mm. Uh, those, are, those are Romulan lens flares. Yes. But I'll give them credit. They didn't go massive, massive ships. Better to have smaller, more thoughtful ships than better, bigger, more powerful ships. So give them all credit for that. That being said, there should have been three or four big ships in that fleet, and then these ones as support ships. I think that would have been better. Just have variation in size, even. You can hear there's a big difference, too. On the bottom right, you can see like the, the no blue chiller grills at all. And then up in the upper left, you see the blue chiller grills and how much of a difference it makes to the to the look. Plus, it's a totally different shaped engine. Um, nice and organic which... and then very, very harsh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next view, you can see you know, we're very close to the ship. And you can see it's all just tulled texture. There's nothing actually there. Although, that said, on the right-hand side... On the nacelle, there is actually Griebling with a very, very blown out Bassard, which Bassards shouldn't be blown out like that. Go back and look at Trek. They're always nicely exposed, nicely red. You get a sense of power. The orange ones are way too bright and they kind of look like just lights, whereas they're meant to be functional, so they lose points for that as well. But there are Greeblies there for some reason. And then you look at the saucer and the windows are A, massive, and B, literally up to the rim of the saucer. So they're literally on the ceiling, like at absolutely as high as the ceiling is. So they didn't quite design that properly either. Uh, next view, the whole fleet. That's actually a nice shot. I don't mind that. Um, it's all the red and blues are powerful. You get a just nice Federation feel. You know? One thing that's also missing from these ships is just the, the banner. Like the, the Starfleet pennant on the side and even on the nacelles, the striping. Um, if you don't have the glowing elements, at least put a Starfleet banner down the side of it. You know, something simple. simple. This is the sort of ship that they need to go back and finish the ship. So when Eagle Must does it, it's actually finished. Because these ships aren't done. These are like three quarters away done. Because if this ship comes out for Eagle Moss and this becomes the canon look, it's like, so all the pen and detail, all registries, are you saying they're all now gone? All ships in the future don't have those? It's like, that's you, but that's a, that's a mistake. That's not a, do you know what I mean? Like, you've got to make at least one version for Eagle Moss that's the one on the posters that actually looks like it should look. So that all the blinkies are gone. And, or is that, or is that just not just a symbol of Star Trek now? We'll take what used to be, strip out all the stuff that's important, and then leave other stuff. Is that not yeah, a symbol? Maybe, maybe. Because even Discovery had blinkies and registries and uh, you know all these phaser ball turrets. You know, uh, next view, side view. This one is the one that really confused me, because you can see the all the angles are so different on all the ships that it makes it look like the 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 more organic ones have four nacelles. And I was like, ooh, four nacelles, but like slammed together. But now we know they don't. But this one, very confusing. Yeah, I thought that for a second too. And then on a rewatch, I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Although, give them credit, um, the bottom one, you can see there's a, there's a hole where there could have been negative space in the pylon and they clearly filled it in at the last minute because that would have been another little problem. So luckily, there isn't. Uh, next view, you get all the front views and you can see how boxy... And no detail. Now there might be a shuttle bay. All credit if it is, as in to the bottom view. But the bottom views is like there's no detail. It's so flat, so boxy. Uh, and you think this is the most advanced ship and most powerful ship in Starfleet? It's like, is it? Although to be fair, I got a sort of sense he was lying. You know, I think he's bragging. He's playing poker. I don't get that sense at all oh, from these ships. Oh, maybe, maybe I didn't. I didn't get that, but yeah. Because he's he's a poker expert. I mean, she doesn't. Although to be fair, she does know these ships because she's commander of Starfleet. I mean, she knows exactly what ships capable of. She knows how many crew they have. She knows her ships. If anything, she would know if she could win or not. Wow, yeah, it doesn't work either. She can't. She, has all, she has all the prefix codes. She can just she drop does. the shields instantly. No, she does. <laughs> well, if they knew that if they, if they knew we were going up against her, I can see them deactivating all that stuff or changing it. So that's not a problem. <laughs> the next view is you get a nice little bottom view, and from from a distance, it's like okay. Uh, next view is the reverse though, and uh, welcome to the biggest bridge window in all of Star Trek ship design. Because <laughs> that is a very, very large bridge window. Yeah, um, I actually liked this shot. Uh, I thought it was kind of neat uh, seeing the ships outside and then the view screen show up. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of problems with this bridge. First of all, those front stations. I'm sure we'll talk about the bridge separately though, probably. Okay. Yes. Um, but this is, this is obviously just a green screen shot. I mean... He's sitting on the chair and he's on a green screen and they made this one quickly. There's no there's no design here. There's no logic here. Um, again, this this is not finished. This this ship is not finished. But next view, that's great though. Look at bloody Captain Riker. Uh, next view though, I laughed at. Weapons hot, deflectors to full. Oh, I know. And then 
the scene right after that is the fleets from the side and you see all the you see a blue whoop go over the ship like do you mean do you mean shields up yeah i, I said that last night it just shows a lack of attention to detail um in this show even though there are some it, it's it's strange that made me laugh but let's close out on the first picture which is the fleet epic shot uh, this has been a long one but i wanted to present as many variations of images and angles and thoughts i'm glad that there's a little bit of variation um and i actually kind of like the yellow <laughs> that they used it's kind of something new uh, I don't have a experimental tech or whatever, but I do like the variation in the nacelles. I just wish there was more variation in ship design, and even if, even as I said, just different sizes. Just having it mixed up. There's just each side is so like blah. Like if you had a, three Dideradexes scattered throughout there, and maybe a Valdor or two, and then all these small ships, I'd be like, that's that's cool. Same with on the Federation side, you have a Sovereign, a Galaxy, and then a bunch of these small ships. I'd be like, that's awesome. That's what a sh fleet should be. So, um, but no, I th I, th I think the designs are interestingly enough. They just need to I need to see them in greater detail and actually, as you say, I guess finish them. Yeah, it it's it's fine. It's okay. It doesn't suck. No, it doesn't. Um, it's just <laughs> it's just like I said. It's the same level of quality as a as a ship of the week from Voyager. Same level of detail, better mm. textures, but I mean, it's as good as a nineteen nineties ship model where the budget was, you know, drastically less. And there might have been problems with timing and availability of people, but if you know there's going to be a fleet of version ships, you know how important that is to the fans and the audience and art design, the fact they didn't put the effort in to prioritise it and to give it some level of effort says so much, and it's sad, because they could have been building this a little bit each episode, or they could have been, you know, said one guy, take it home every weekend and do it, a really talented guy, or hide out to a, a separate company just to, just to dedicate, just to make, or get Pierre back on it, who built, you know, look at the Discovery ships, look at Shinjo and the things that he did, much better. So guys, let us know your thoughts down in the comments down below, and as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to check the notification icon, and select all, because that's very important, uh, that we get notified every time we upload. We love looking at ships, and we, we, will, we will do an episode, I think, on the bridge alone, because I think that'll be interesting. Um, so stay tuned for other great videos from us, but make sure you click that all notifications so you get notified mm -hmm. and of course pause on patreon if you can monthly We've got a lot of great content coming back on ships this is the restart of our ship content as it were because now the card is finished that legacy has happened now we're back to looking at the big wide world of ship designs some really cool stuff coming up both from fan designs from starting online designs from game designs some really cool stuff so look forward to that if you can support like i said patreon's a great way one-time donation at trekyards.com, uh, that donate button, or join the channel. It's another great way. It's like a Patreon, but you get to talk to us more directly in the chats. It's really great. All the great ways. Uh, and support us if you can. Thanks in advance, and we'll see you next time. That's right. So until then, I'm Captain Foley. And I'm Connor Kangs. See you guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>